When you have a really clear understanding of what you're doing and the reasons behind, what other people say simply just do not concern you. There's actually no good shot until you raise your camera and start actually shooting. Now that you know this, you're in a position to control your thoughts Hello photographer, welcome back to my channel. It's Belinda and this is where we talk all about photography from inspiration to camera techniques to editing skills so that you could take better photos. Well, love it or not, fear and negativity is always, always going to be part of street photography. It's almost like it's in the DNA of street photography. You're probably wondering if it's just your problem, if you feel this stress when it comes to street photography, I can assure you that it's definitely not. It's actually a shared sentiment among street photographers at some point in their career. Some time ago, there were two really thoughtful comments on this channel, one from Francis and the other from Pablo, sharing with me how they were struggling in terms of shooting streets. This inspired me to make a video to open up the discussion to photographers who shoot on streets, who are going through the same thing are those who would share the experience with the others. So without further ado, let's dive right in. One of the most liberating things that I've realized over the years is the fact that if you don't want to overcome this fear, you don't have to. Fear in street photography, it's mostly associated with people. But why must there be people in your street photography? There are many approaches and creeds when it comes to what constitutes real street photography. There are some people who contend that there must be people in there because street is all about people. People have to be shot really close up. Some people believe that street photography is about reflecting the relation between its subject and the environment. So it has to have both both people and an environment. Lastly, there are street photographers who do only shoot things they find on streets. There are 100 million different ways of shooting streets and therefore by no means think that you're not a legit street photographer just because you're afraid of shooting people. In the very first place, there is no one who's there to judge what is and what is not street photography. If you would just take some time to study the work of the greatest street photographers who ever lived in history, you'd realize that street photography really is not about shooting intimidating photos. Let's look briefly at the work of Henri Cartier-Bresson. If you flick through his images, a lot of these images are shot without eye contact from the human subject. There are even shots where there are no humans at all. In his work, geometry was a huge thing. Composition was a huge thing. You don't need to have people in your work for that to be qualified as street photography. And here's another great photographer, William Eccleston. So he is well known for being able to capture really cool color combinations and making use of that in his compositions. Now, if you look at his work, there are often not people even in the frame. But I will still categorize this as street photography. So the point I'm trying to make here is that first and foremost, street photography does not have to be intimidating. It does not have to involve people, which is usually where the fear comes from. And secondly, if this fear happens to be so overwhelming for you, then don't do it. At the end of the day, you're shooting for yourself. If shooting people does not make you happy, you don't have to. When you say that you're experiencing fear in street photography, what even does that fear refer to? The tricky thing about this fear is the fact that it comes from many different places for different people and even for the same person, it is caused by different things. The fear that you experience is kind of different in different situations you run into. This makes it really hard to underpin what exactly is causing that fear in you. So in the rest of this video, I'm going to try to unpack it for you based on my experience. Okay, so having observed myself as a street photographer, I think that there are four main types of fears when it comes to street photography. The first being the fear of physical or verbal assault. The second being the rejection from people and the moral condemnation that would ensue. Thirdly, being the fear of ruining that moment, being not skilled enough to take that one shot. And the last being the fear of having to talk to people. So the fear for conversation. At this point, you would have realized that these kinds of fears are very different from one another. And so let's look at them one by one. The fear of assault, I feel like it's something that is mostly in your head. How it typically plays out is that you saw a person that you want to photograph, but for some reason you think that they look mean and that maybe they look dangerous, and so you start to develop this apprehension that they're gonna hurt you if you take their photo. The reason why I think this is kind of in your head is because, logically speaking, we all know. There's no way that you could know for sure how that person will react when you take the photo until you actually take it. You can't judge a book by its cover. I've been in many situations in which the people that I approached seem to be really nasty people on the surface, but they were actually really happy to have their photo taken. Whereas on the other hand, there can be people who dress up really poshly, they seem really polite, but they turn out to be not so friendly as you expected. 
Thank you. Cheers. Where are you from? I'm from Hong Kong. So the logical conclusion as to whether the person hurts you versus not hurting you really is a 50-50 split. Both things are equally as likely to happen but for some reason your brain decides to focus on the negative thinking that that person will hurt you. Now that you know this, you're in a position to control your thoughts. You have the power to tell yourself that it might happen but it also might not happen. And because you only know until you take a shot, you take the shot. Another mental trick that I do on myself whenever I feel that my safety is threatened is that I borrow the minds of the greatest photographer who have been covering wars and really dangerous situations, one of which being Robert Kappa. I would ask myself, what would Robert Kappa do in this situation? He has made photos during wars and he has been in all sorts of situations where people are armed, there are weapons all around. And I'd ask myself, if he had the guts to pull off that shot, how would he have reacted to this situation where I thought this person looks mean? It does not take rocket science to realize that he really wouldn't care and he would just fire the shot because the greatest photographers would have fired the shot in this situation. That's why you should also fire that shot. Let's take a step back from photography and just think about life in general. Everyone faces rejection in life. We face different kinds of criticism from people who actually matter for things that actually have a difference in our lives. Back to street photography. This person who you never met and probably will never meet ever again just talk shit at you, which is probably going to be a two second live event. All of this hard feeling, the discomfort that we feel seem to be way out of proportion compared to what is at stake. It actually points to way deeper issues inside of us that we shy away from and are reluctant to admit which is the lack of understanding of your purpose when you don't really know why you're shooting street photography and that the relation between you and your photos are unclear as soon as someone questions you on it in form of a criticism or rejection you don't have well thought out grounds to fall back on to justify what you're doing when someone calls out on you you're scared to admit that you don't actually know what you're doing if you have a clear solid understanding of what your purpose for your street photography is and that you believe this purpose to be a legitimate one, whatever other people think means so little. The fact that they reject you or the fact that they question what you're doing does not affect you in any way because you are the expert, you know best what your street photography stands for. No one has the right to tell you that your purpose for shooting streets is wrong. Some while ago when I did this video, I was shooting in the neighborhood to document the lockdown situation in London. There were people who made fun of me, there were people who made mean remarks about me and that they didn't want to be on camera, but it's okay. Hey, like it didn't bother me because I believe that documenting the lockdown is a very good reason for me to be shooting. I'm truly convinced that what I'm doing is important. When you have a really clear understanding of what you're doing and the reasons behind, what other people say simply just do not concern you. This is actually the most common one for me. Also, in my opinion, the one that is hardest to overcome. I would say that it's more nervousness than fear, but basically how this happens is that you see a scene and you think to yourself, whoa, that would make a good shot. But you are fearful because you are scared that once you raise your camera and actually take the shot, you would ruin the moment because people would notice you, the shot would be gone, and you would be the culprit because if you were more competent, if you had better skills, you would have captured that great shot. This line of thought always happen in in the back of my head but over time I came to realize that there's actually no good shot until you raise your camera and start actually shooting. You can't really tell for sure how that photo is going to turn out until you see it in your viewfinder. There are countless of times where I thought one shot would be the great shot. When I actually take the shot I realize that well it's not that good as I thought and there were many other times where I thought that this shot would just be mediocre and when I actually look into the viewfinder it turns out to be a great shot. So it makes no sense to tell yourself that oh that is a great shot if you haven't even actually started working on that shot. And so in order to find out if that is a good shot you've gotta actually just shoot and this is when the magic happens in my opinion because as soon as I raise my camera that nervousness or that fear or that shyness or that anxiety like whatever you want to call it immediately in a snap of finger turns into excitement once I've tasked myself with finding out the best way to compose the shot and to take the shot I literally just focus on that one thing and I forget about all the other small thoughts in my head so whenever you find yourself in a situation like this just make an executive order to your hand to raise the camera and actually just start shooting and honestly even if you actually 
actually ruin the shot, right? Don't take this so personally because ruining a shot and missing a shot does not necessarily have anything to do with your skill level as a street photographer. There's always a chance element in the making of a strong photo. That element of luck can actually be way more than you think. So let's say if indeed you failed to capture that one moment that you thought you wanted to capture, it could be because of a variety of things. Maybe the subject happens to be a person who is ultra sensitive to the camera. Maybe it was a very quiet day and that's why your camera is making all the noise there is. There are a lot of conditions that have to be met. There are a lot of things that have to go right in one particular situation for a good photograph to happen. Really, it doesn't always have to do with their skill level. Plus, I feel that every bad shot contains a blessing that's way larger than what you've lost. The point in street photography does not always have to be getting good shots. Just making yourself take shots is a very great way to give yourself the creative practice that you need to notice framings, to notice timings, so that you come back the next time and you're able to take that shot. Frankly speaking, this fear does not apply to me as much as the other ones do because as a person, I'm naturally quite extroverted and I do enjoy talking to people most of the time. I still resonate with this is because there are times when I just don't feel like talking. So if I find myself in a conversation that I don't feel like having, I just wrap it up and leave. It sounds really basic, but it ties into the point that I made in the very beginning. Again, in street photography, you're ultimately shooting for yourself. By no means feel obliged to do things that don't make you comfortable. If you don't want to do something, just don't do it. The fact that you don't talk to people and that you don't interact as much with your subject does not make you any less of a street photographer. Based on my experience, if you happen to be in a conversation with a person that you just randomly photographed on the street, they are usually the talkative ones. They are usually the curious ones who want to know more about you and they probably really like talking about themselves as well. So basically all you have to do is to smile and to not, that's pretty much you've got to do. So even if you don't feel like having a conversation, honestly, you don't really have to talk that much anyway. I feel like this fear that we experience is not a direct result of a certain event that happens. So in this case, the fear is not directly resulting from the fact that someone wants to talk to you. Rather, this fear is really the consequence of your thoughts. Imagine you thought about the idea of having a conversation in a different way. They are strangers. They don't have mutual connections with you. They couldn't judge what you're saying and they can't possibly tell tell your secrets to someone who you personally know, it's easier to open up to them because you know that there will be no implications as to what you say to them. If you think about it that way, having conversations does not drive fear. It could be excitement, liberation, calmness, whatever, but fear, right? It is what you think that is leading to the fear, not the fact that you have to make a conversation per se. Plus, if you are experiencing this fear of having a conversation, I would argue that it also ties into the fact that you don't really know why you're shooting street photography. If someone asks you about what you do, you should have no issues talking about what you do because that's something you truly believe in and that it's something that you're truly passionate about. It should be quite easy to talk about things that really matter to you and if you have difficulty in telling them what exactly you do with confidence, it actually points to a deeper issue inside of you which is the fact that you don't really know why you're doing street photography. Once you've figured out clearly what your purpose is for street photography, a lot of these fears just naturally fall away. In this video, I purposely did not touch on these specific tricks or actions that I take when I'm on streets to blend in and to take candid street photography because everyone apparently has different habits on streets and you have to develop your own. But I believe that it's a mindset and a way you think about it that is really making a difference in street photography. But if you're still interested in knowing the tricks that I do when I'm on streets, head over to my blog where I wrote an article just about that. Hopefully this gave you some more perspective as to how you could change your mindset to overcome this fear in street photography. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!